Welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior, and you are watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. Well, when last we left off, we had received a letter from the Jarl of Falkreath, and we traveled up here uh, to talk to him and find out if he has any work for us, some way that we can earn a little money. Uh, maybe gather a little bit yes. of information up what here. Is it that you want? Uh, and we robbed his longhouse before he woke you. up. Finally, someone useful is around. Ah, it's you. Yes, well, now we'll see if the stories about you are true. There's a group of bandits in my hold that I may have had a few discreet dealings with. The cut they were giving me was good at first, but now... Now it's time to clean things up. Go and take care of it. We can do that. Good. Yeah. No more small talk. Execute every last bandit. Spare no one. Hmm. This idea of executing everyone, that kind of sets us on that assassin path a little bit. Or is it a cold-blooded murderer path? I'm not sure. We shall see. So, what's next? So we've talked to the Arl. We've got a quest here. It sounds like we have to go to a place. Um, I think it's called Knife Point. We're going to deal with some bandits there. But before I do that, i got to do some shopping. I want to make some potions. Um, if I can find the alchemy shop. You know, it's a small town, but I get turned around nonetheless. I think I should have... Going left instead of right. Yes. And I'm going to sell off some stuff. I've got some leather. I'm probably going to make some bracers. See if I can get a level or two in smithing before we head out. But in the meantime, there are... A few things to catch up on, of course. If you remember, you in way. the I first episode, the prologue episode, on our way to Falkreath, we actually leveled up from Take level 10 to 11. Points have been invested in stamina. And then I invested a perk in level 2 archery overdraw. And all of the character stats for fleet will be updated to reflect those changes on Elder Stats. The link to Elder Stats Until next is time. in the show notes. That will take you directly to Fleet Featherstone's character profile where you can kind of keep up with how I'm leveling and all these different skills and what perks we're picking along the way toward becoming that arcane archer assassin that we want. Those are kind of some of the things that are going on with our build. On another note, um, once I hit level 10, the whole reason we ended up coming to Falkreath is because a courier delivered a letter to me from the Jarl asking me to come. It's kind of interesting that we've garnered a reputation at this point, despite the fact that we haven't done any major quests up to level 10, uh, and still. So, but... If you remember from the prologue, what that means is when a courier visits Fleet, he also sends a letter. And it's through these letters that I'm going to be kind of communicating what his thoughts are uh, from the character perspective. So what I have done is I have written a letter. Fleet has written a letter that he has sent with that courier to his father. You can find a transcript of that letter out on the website at... CouchWarrior.tv And if you look there, I've created a special page called The Writings of Fleet, and I'll just be service. posting everything in there. There'll be uh, a name for the letter. Usually the letters will have a title, and then the date that I wrote the letter or uploaded the letter or whatever. So since we're just in shopping mode, I will read the letter to you now. It's fairly short, but it goes Browse as follows. As Please. Dearest Father, I hope this letter finds you in exquisite misery, covered head to toe and festering boils. If not, however, I wish you only the best of health and happiness. 
The most remarkable thing has happened. Just the other day, during my daily constitutional breaking rock in the prison mines, I came to the shocking realization that my freedom was only one broken neck away. You see, I enjoy taking my lunch on a perch near the top of our beloved mining scaffold. I was very near to throwing myself off when I noticed the slightest sliver of light. It was a revelation. It was as if the heavens opened up and Mara herself was gazing down upon my wretched form, taking pity upon me for the injustice of my plight. As you are aware, I have always been one to seize the moment, a trait that I feel you never truly appreciated. It's surprising how easily a man's neck can snap with just the right leverage. Well, I don't want to bore you with all the details. Suffice it to say, I think one guard giving his life for the freedom of his better is a noble way to die, don't you? Don't let the Since being out in the fresh air again, old. I have finally I know, begun to clear strange. my mind. Not exactly this clarity of thought brought to, to mind a small bit of wisdom you bestowed upon me the day you left me to rot in prison. Please someone forgive me if I don't get it exactly right, but up for them? in life... Our prisons are our, of our own making. My time in prison has afforded me ample opportunity to reflect on this, and it has become the singular truth by which I now live. This is the truth by which Linway slit his own throat the day he left me to the Imperials. This is the truth by which you will die a lonely and broken man. You see, Father, there is another side to this truth. In this truth is also found the power to create. By leaving your only son to rot, you created the very thing that will be your undoing. Isn't it remarkable how things are connected? Anyway, sorry to prattle on and on. It's just that I have not had the means in which to write a letter in two years, and I find that I have much to say. Well, I must go. It's a long walk to Skyrim, and I am anxious to reminisce with my old comrade Linway. Oh yes, on another note. I imagine an inheritance is no longer an option. No matter, feel free to spend it as you like, perhaps on that horker of a mistress you've been keeping. With much love, Fleet. Don't let the shops Thank you for bearing with me on that. Look. Now... Um, I chose to include that, and I probably will. Like, every time we see a courier, I should just have a little sound effect that, you know, some kind of ringing bell that lets everybody know that in the next episode I'm probably going to be reading a letter from Fleet to somebody. I imagine he'll write his father often, but I'm guessing there's going to be other interesting personalities in his past that he will write to. And the idea of these letters is to give voice to a character that really can't speak in the game um of course skyrim is really sort of that silent protagonist model right where um, our character doesn't really get to speak um, we have certain things we can choose but ultimately um that's all we can do choose from a preset number of choices so this is my way of of doing that now, if you want to hear the super nerdy someone version new, of this reading, I've also recorded it and put it out under the Writings of Fleet. You'll see the letter in transcript form and an audio recording form. And in the audio, audio recording, I put in a little bit more effort and I get, like I say, super nerdy about it. Um, I was debating whether or not to even put it up because, frankly, there are times when I'm when I'm when I get inspired and I I just get all psyched up and I think oh it would be so cool if if I tried to do a more theatrical reading of this and tried to speak from his voice and then if I give myself time to think about it I get self-conscious and I think oh, that's a lame ass idea <laughs> and so I shelve it so sometimes when those ideas come to me when I'm feeling it I just do it and I put it out there and if you, you know, were willing to retrieve whatever so uh, if feel free to listen to that one if you want to like I said, that's a super nerdy version. Oh. Um, so what it's have we done so far here? Um, well, I was work. yammering on uh, about some Fleet's letter. Down, we I made some daughter. potions. The um, well, the the lady who actually owns Grave Concoctions was Steel busy. We robbed her blind. We stole a whole bunch of ingredients and made Helmets. some more potions, Pretty much anything which is fantastic. 
Now we're trying to get past Lod and all of his talk about the dog so we can get down to business, and we're going to sell him some junk we picked up on the way to Falkreath, as well as, I think, we'll make some leather bracers from a bunch of pelts that we gathered along the way too. See if we can get some levels there. Lighten our load a bit, and then we'll move on. So, it's been a while since I've been to Knife Point Ridge. I'm pretty sure I remember where it is. If I remember correctly, um, it's not too far from Falkreath. But it's kind of a, a walk in the wilderness, if you will. So, see we'll be able to see arms arms. some of the beautiful landscape of Southern Skyrim. So, usually what I do is I'll take about, I'll take all my pelts, convert them to leather, and then I'll take about half of those units of leather and convert them to strips, and then I'll come to the forge and I'll make a whole bunch of these bracers, leather bracers. If I only have, you know, maybe one or two pelts, not really enough worth bothering, a lot of times I'll just convert them to leather and then convert them straight to strips because they uh, are a bit lighter in strip form than they are as full sheets of leather. And, you know, you can never have enough leather strips in this game. They're useful for many different things. So, just another way to lighten the load, I guess. I can't believe we let provincials like you wander Skyrim. I can't believe we let provincials like you wander Skyrim. Provincial isn't really an insult, is it? But it's the way well, he man. says it. Oh, a bit Makes of me want to smack him. That. But we're not going to smack anybody yet. I'm feeling like at level 11, it's not prudent to smack people a lot. But there's going to come a point where we're going to do a lot of smacking. So right now, we're just trying to build up to that. Interesting to note here, there's a couple of things in my inventory that were items I stole I stole from the, uh, the Jarl's Longhouse. A couple of which, these, these um, fine outfits. I know the hat wasn't marked as theft, but the outfit was for sure. And for some reason, I'm able to sell it to this guy. So, maybe I don't really understand how that mechanic works. My assumption was always that if the item was in red taking it was considered theft and that you could only sell it to a fence. Um, but maybe that's not always true. Maybe there are some vendors that can take that stuff. I don't know if anybody's got an answer to that or would like to research it and chime in. I welcome it. Yeah. Steal. So obviously, our primary objective, Anything from my fleet's shop, primary objective, it. is to find Looking that bastard Linway who betrayed him. Be seeing you, stranger. All he knows at this point is that after leaving him behind, Linway disappeared. And he has heard a rumor that Linway has picked up the operation that they built together and moved it to Skyrim. So at this point, we're operating under the assumption that Linway is somewhere in Skyrim trying to establish a Thieves' Guild. The other thing that we know for certain is that Skyrim already has an existing Thieves' Guild. What we're hearing is that that Thieves' Guild is in pretty rough shape, but there's one that exists. So, this actually gives us well, let's see, how far do we got to go here? Let's put up our quest marker quickly before I go on. I just want to get a sense for how far this is. I don't need this. Okay. Yeah, kind of a straight shot through the woods, over the hills. Knife Point Ridge. Okay. So it, what it does is it actually gives us a really great way in which to find Linway as long as we're patient. And one of the characteristics of this character, Fleet, is that he is cold, he is calculating, and 
patience would not be a problem for him. So his strategy is going to be, as soon as he is able, he is going to try to locate the Thieves' Guild in Skyrim. He's going to try to get into that guild and establish himself as a member, hoping that eventually, eventually, if Linway is trying to set up a guild in Skyrim, they are going to start butting heads with the existing guild. And that is going to be sort of the beacon that will mark Linway's location for him. Uh, it's just a matter of time, right? So Fleet's feeling is that if he embeds himself in the existing Thieves' Guild, eventually Linway is going to come to him. So that's our strategy. Hmm. I've actually never tried activating this door without having gone this far in the quest line. <laughs> yeah, these are all dumb answers. Yeah, this is creepy. And what we've heard so far is we did hear a rumor at the Sleeping Giant that there was a kid. What is his name? Uh, is it Aventus Aretino or something? Quentin Tarantino, I think. <laughs> he's uh, doing a... Um, He's doing the Black Sacrament. So we understand something of the concept of the Dark Brotherhood, but Fleet wouldn't necessarily understand that this is what he's seeing here. To him, it's just a creepy door that he probably wasn't thinking he should hang around for very long. So we're going we're gonna to move away. But it'll be uh, some interesting irony for the future. All right. We are going to just kind of head straight shot right through the woods toward our quest marker. You'll notice, as usual, going in stealth. And, you know, right, generally speaking, traveling isn't something that you consider applying strategy to. And perhaps um, my way of doing it is overkill. But I actually have some fairly standard rules. Maybe they're not even rules. Maybe they're more habits that I that I follow when I'm actually traveling in the open world like this, especially at low levels. The first rule is I'm always traveling in stealth mode. Always, always. The only reason I come out of stealth mode is if I, if I need to make a quick escape, if I have to run. Um, so I'm always in stealth mode. I'm always um, putting away the bow and pulling the bow back out in order to speed up my travel. That's something I noticed pretty early on, is that uh, when I put the bow away and took it out, it would like almost double my movement rate in stealth mode. Uh, until I jump off something, or I come to a dead stop, or something like that. See there, I'm putting it away, pulling it back out, and now I'm speeding up. Um, the other, One of the other habits I have is, like I'm doing here, I'm hugging the terrain. So I'm moving from tree to tree. When I can, I'm putting rock faces to either my right or left, so I have a flank that's covered. So in this way, I'm trying to protect myself. I'm trying to narrow um, the field of view that I need to worry about when looking for enemies. And it's particularly critical at low levels when you might not have the advantage of, of low-light vision, or you may not have a shout for Aura Whisper anything like that. So it's helpful if there's, you know, a lot of terrain like this, you can just keep the rock face on your right side and use it as cover so you only have to watch the left. And then I'm also keeping a very close eye on my reticle. So whenever I see the eye pop open, I pause and I and I do kind of a 360. I kind of look around myself to see if I can pinpoint what it is that's seeing me. If if I can't see it, I'll move cautiously in a couple different directions to kind of test what direction seems to activate the reticle, and then um, I'll make a decision what to do from there, whether or not to go a different direction or to, you know, confront whatever it is. The other thing I do is I is I look for high points. You can see these these little dips and stuff. Th this area here is just, it's chock full of little valleys and things like that. Um, one of the things I find particularly useful is I'll find a high spot and I'll 
get up on top of a rock or something and I'll look down. Uh, if I if I have the ability to use uh, eagle eye, I'll use it. So here's here's an example where I'm I'm trying to find a high spot where I can kind of get a look to see what the path ahead is, see if I can see any movement, anything like that. Obviously it's dark now, so my vision isn't super great, so I'm trying to find a way to make sure I don't get jumped or surprised. Especially now, too, when, I, when I'm starting to see the marker for the camp, I know I'm getting close. So now is when I, when I want to be really cautious. I don't want to blow my cover just trying to approach. Um, I want to maintain stealth as much as I possibly can. And at this level, I can't take stealth for granted. I can't assume that I'm going to be able to walk up close and they're not going to see me. At higher levels, when you max out stealth, there are occasions where you can just walk straight up to people and they won't even know you're there under the right conditions. So... We do have the weather in our favor a little bit here. It's dark, and I think it's going to be getting darker as we start our attack. We'll take this horse hide. It's good for bracers. This is a mess. There's part of me that feels sorry for these people. But on the other hand, you know, why the heck are you so far up the road? That was probably a really bad decision. And probably within sight of a fairly sizable bandit camp. Okay, I think we're on the approach. I think I'm going to cut it here, and in the next episode, we will go ahead and attack this bandit camp. Well, dear viewers, we've reached the end of this episode. I thank you for taking the journey with me. And until next time, may all that you do be swift, quiet, and deadly. And to all Skyrim assassins, I salute you. Silence is our battle cry. You've been watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. If you liked this video, please rate, like, and subscribe. For more information on this and other Couch Warrior broadcasts, visit me on the web at www.couchwarrior.tv.